So I'm going to talk about the uh, problem of uh, coastal inundation and flooding in coastal areas around Chesapeake Bay. Specifically, I will talk about how climate change can worsen this problem of uh, flooding by increasing the mean sea level, changing the tides, which you may not realize, and make stronger storms and stronger storm surge. Um, you know, the, uh, we have evidence of that sea level rise in Chesapeake Bay. So we have a bunch of, NOAA has a bunch of uh, tidal gauges uh, throughout Chesapeake Bay from Baltimore, Annapolis, Washington DC, down to Norfolk. So it has been taking water level measurement since early last century. So when you average out the daily up and down the water level, you, what you see is this upward trend of, of mean sea level. So it's very clear over the last century has increased between 30 to 40 cent, um, centimeters over the last four century. So, uh, so that when you have this gradual sea level rise plus the up and downs of the tides in mean high and low tides, your next high tide is going to be a little bit higher than your previous high tide. So what you're having is this thing. So this is without a storm, you're going to have a lot of flooding, what do we call nuisance flooding. The flooding that don't kill you, but makes your life miserable. <laughs> um, so this is one, <laughs> one of the, uh, in downtown Annapolis, and this is in Baltimore, and this is in uh, Norfolk. I actually went to a meeting workshop at ODU last summer. I was told that a, a doctor lived in a, 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 worked at an emergency hospital uh, in a waterfront area, beautiful waterfront houses. He, ha he actually has to watch his title table to plan to, his, to, to go to work. So he actually elevated his houses several feet off the ground, and he actually make waterproof of his, wa uh, of, of his floor. So in case it gets too bad, water gets into the house, he actually can open up some of the sediments so the water can drain into the basement. So this is some, some of the sort of planning, the personal planning he's doing and for his home. And if you think that flooding is already bad, you look at the projections for the future. And uh, right now in DC, estimate about 40 news and flooding events each year by, oh, sorry, uh, by 2030, it's going to be 170. By 2045, it's going to be 370. So almost every day, you're going to have some nuisance, fl uh, nuisance flooding somewhere in Washington, D.C. Our state capital, Annapolis, is not far behind. And so this is actually um, someone at the Union for Concern Science compiled this, uh, uh, the flooding events, nuisance, nuisance, uh, nuisance flooding events in all the cities and, and towns in the United States. You see the Chesapeake Bay, several places in Chesapeake make to a top honor list. So Washington DC is the top one, our state is number three. So we are at the forefront of this coastal flooding, coastal inundation problem. Good for scientists, maybe a little bit more work for planners. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so this is just a reflection of the fact that we have a, a, a global sea level rise. So this is a look at the, the global sea level over the last fan century, and if you draw a straight line through it, it's about two millimeters per year, about 20 centimeters over the last century. But if you look more closely, in the beginning of the last century, maybe only one millimeter per year. Uh, toward the end of last century, it's about three millimeter a year. So there's the sea level rise accelerated. And this corresponding to the fact that the uh, temperature, the global mean temperature has increased by about one degree over the same period. And well, you know, with, you know if you boil a part of water, the water expands, so when the wa ocean water becomes warmer, so it expands. That's one of the reasons that warming causes sea level to rise. Of course, if you warm a lot, you're going to melt the sea ice, you know, glaciers. That's going to, you know, uh, drain into the ocean. So, uh, you know, there's a clear connection between global warming and sea level rise. Uh, once you will notice that, uh, you know, as I said, that Globally, in the last century, it increased by about 20 centimeters per second. But if you look at Baltimore, it's about 30 centimeters or close to 40 centimeters. So in Chesapeake Bay, we have much larger, what we call relative sea level rise than the global uh, sea level rise. This is because the land we're standing now or sitting now is sinking. But also there's something interesting happening uh, on the, in, on the, in, in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, let me go. So if you stay on a ship, in the North Atlantic, look at the plate, continental plate in North America. This is New England, Gulf of Maine. This is New York, and, and this is uh, you know, where we are, the Mid-Atlantic. So you can think about this as a, a seesaw with a pivot point at New Jersey. And in the last glacial period, we have a lot of ice in the northern regions, which 
kind of press this plate down. So we, we, on the other side, in the middle lag region, it goes up. During this interglacial period, in this warming period, this ice retreat, you know, melt. So the uh, so we, we are actually going down. So that it, it, this plate is going up, this going down. So we our land in, in our area is, is sinking. So that's one of the reasons that we have a higher zero rise uh, than other places. So another thing that happening is that in the North Atlantic, everybody heard about Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream departs Cape Harris, and, you know, here, go to the North Atlantic Ocean. And people find that over the last 10, 15 years, the Gulf Stream has been slowing down due to, due to climate change. So this is a measure of the Gulf Stream flow. It's going down from 2006. In the meantime, the sea level in Baltimore, Annapolis, or Solomon Island increases. This is because that when we go across the Gulf Stream, actually the sea level on the ocean side is about one meter higher. Just because the Earth is rotating, you have to maintain that pressure gradient to, 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 to balance that Coriolis force in the Gulf Stream. So if this Gulf Stream is slowing down, the sea level in the open ocean, and different between the open ocean and the coast, you know, becomes smaller. So effectively raising the coastal sea level. So that's why, you know, because of the climate change, changing ocean circulation, and the sea level, coast sea level in the, uh, from, you know, in the mid-Atlantic region is rising because of changing ocean circulation. People are saying, looking into the future with climate change, this, this, this Gulf Stream is a part of what we call Atlantic Mariana overturning circulation. If we melt a lot of ice in the Arctic, you actually can shut down this Atlantic uh, uh, overturning circulation. So the Gulf Stream could be even weaker that could cause a further uh, sea level rise along the coast. So looking in the future, uh, this is global mean sea level. So uh, this is uh, business as usual, doing nothing. So we, we, everybody pulled the atmosphere with the carbon dioxide. So the, the mean sea level, global mean sea level, will be rise between 60 centimeters and one meter. And uh, if everybody, everybody doing their fair share, work hard, we may get much lower. And if we take that and consider, sorry, consider what's happening in our local region, like land substance and changing ocean circulation, this is what we estimate for the state of Maryland, is that in 2050, maybe about 45, you know, 50 centimeters uh, increase in mean sea level, uh, about one, over one meter increase in mean sea level. So it's quite a substantial increase. What does that mean? To us, to me, to people living on the eastern shore, this is what we did. We take that global proje uh, the, the, the projections and project over the, uh, the, the Dolchers County. Uh, Home Point Lab is here. I think you can still come to Home Point Lab, but not to the uh, Blackwater National Wild Refuge by 2100. So more than half of the lower Dolchers County will be uh, underwater. So I think that in the movie we're saying that this is, right now is the fourth largest county in, in Maryland. It's going to be 14 largest by 2100. So there's going to be, we're going to lose a lot of land. Um, I would just say it runs through the end. So it's really we're dealing with some dramatic changes. So what do we do about that? This is where you guys come play. So are we going to build these seawalls, like this is in Massachusetts, or are we going to use more natural means like uh, sea grasses or uh, or salt marshes. So, um, and, and what I will tell you, and what my research is doing, that's why I'm excited to be here, is that what we do with coastline management really matters. Okay, so this is what we did. So something uh, really simple. What do we say? Well, let's assume that by 2100, the projection is about one meter sea level rise. We'll look at the changes in tide, tidal range. Okay, so one scenario we said that uh, this is what, you know, this is the prediction of the current tides. I, I, I don't have a figure to show you, but we, we do a very good job, model does a very good job that, sh you know, predict the current tidal range. Let's say in 2100, when the sea level is one meter higher, one scenario, we, we go with nature, we don't do nothing. So we don't try to protect, we let the low-lying area be flooded. We move people to high ground, for example, and we build a salt marsh. Another, another scenario is saying that we're going to fight it. We're going to build seawalls everywhere. But this is, you know, modelless, idealized thinking about how do we do coastline ma management. Uh, but we learn a lot. One thing we learn is that, see, that tidal range actually decreases 
you know, I mean the, the maximum, you know, the, lo, the, the high difference between low tide and high tide actually decreases if you allow the low-lying area to flood it. On the other hand, if you uh, build walls everywhere, you actually, you know, people in the lower, <laughs> the biggest actually send trouble to Baltimore and Washington, D.C. So we actually increase the water levels, uh, increase the tidal height. So what you do with coastline management really matters how tide responds. So if you if put some quality numbers, and so for, for Baltimore, there's going to be 18% difference uh, in tidal height, peak tidal height, whether you, you know, build seawalls or you let the lower island area uh, to be flooded. Uh, Washington DC is 11%. In Philadelphia, it's 21, uh, uh, 21%. So the reason is that actually, um, by flooding the lower area, you let those bring additional friction. When the tidal waves comes in, you actually uh, dissipate a lot of energy. If you sort of uh, uh, build a uh, uh, seawall to confine it, you actually let send the tidal wave further upstream. Uh, uh, so it means, okay, I should run uh, So another thing we will look at is, not only th this is what you happening on a daily basis, what happens when you hurricanes. We have quite a few hurricanes last year. Uh, this one in, in uh, Hurricane Sandy in 2012 hit New Jersey area pretty hard. This is the one that Bill and I was talking about. So what the question I'm, I'm asking is that what happens if a Category 2 storm like Isabel hit in 2050 and 2100 when the sea level is higher, when the mean temperature is higher, and the ocean temperature is higher? So we, we have an atmospheric ocean model, which I won't bore, bore you with details. And, and so first of all, I show you that you can trust me. We did the model pretty well. You know, that you can predict the storm surge very well. So it has some, you know, uh, uh, you can be used for this kind of prediction purpose. So what we did was that we take, say, we have global model projections. So we have different, this is business, sorry. This is business as usual, high emission scenarios. By 2050, the temperature in North Atlantic increased by 1.5 degree, sea level rise 0.5 meter. <clears throat> and the, by 2100, in, the temperature increased by three degrees, uh, sea rise by one, one meter. So let's do that. So if Isabel comes in at 2050 and 2100, what will happen? First of all, we notice that the lower pressure, which is a measure of the intensity of the storm, will be much stronger. So much lower, much stronger storm. And the maximum wind will be much higher, you know, from about say uh, 45 meters per second to about 60 meters per second. So there's going to, due to warmer temperature, there's going to be a much more intense storms. So this is actually, I'm only look at not the changes, it means sea level, that's one meter, right? Uh, whatever, the, you know, 50 centimeters for 2050 and one meter for 2100. I'm just looking at the part that the storm surge part. So what you see here in Baltimore, you see that this is the, you know, the past, uh, this is the, in 2003 what happened. This is observation, black line is a model prediction. By, let's, let's look at by 2100, it's the same, same, same story for 2050. So it's going to be, uh, if you don't do anything, with, if you let low line area flood it, your, your peak uh, surge would be increased from 2.2 to about 2.7 uh, uh, meters, about 50 centimeters higher if you do a, a soft shore line. If you, try to protect it, if you try to fight it, the peak surge would be 3.5 meters. So basically, um, you know, if I translate to feet, uh, the, the surge height in, uh, in 2003 was about six feet. It's gonna be about 12 feet to 13 feet by 2100, so, you know, due to climate change. So um, you can do that, you can project the surge height through to GIS or Google Map, and you can look at this is what happens in a flood area in 2003. This is projected flood area in 2100 due to kind of Israel like storm and a high, uh, high carbon emission scenario. So, in summary, I think that you know the nuisance flooding due to sea level rise and tides it's becoming a, a daily problem now. And uh, so that we have indications that storm surge uh, is related to warming climate and because that's where the uh, ocean provides energy for those storms. And we have some tools. I think that we love to produce some um, result, you know, products or help the planners to actually how do we plan to deal with this kind of situation. Uh, and really what you decide to do really matters. 
because if you try to fight the building seawalls, you would amplify the storm surge. Basically, you are sending trouble to, to, uh, to other places. If you try to work with nature, uh, you know, build salt marsh, something like that, you maybe you know, mediate some of the effect. Thank you.